Yo, Molo Sanbunani, hello, how's it? Shalom. Good, uh, good afternoon, good people. Let me just sort myself out here very quickly. Uh, because this vlog was relatively last minute, relatively speaking. Uh, and also there's a lot of prep I had to do for it because man oh man has it not been a very crazy uh, <laughs> um, jeepers I, I don't even know how to begin telling this story it's been a crazy crazy past few days as the EFF or pardon me AFRI Forum have taken on um, the EFF and specifically its leader and its spokesperson Mbuyseni Ngozi in a hate speech case. They're currently in the Johannesburg High Court um, under its guise as well as the Equality Court um, prosecuting this very issue and some of the things that have come out in this case are just absolutely stupefying, absolutely amazing and what I find shocking about it is the almost silence, if you will, from the, the the corporate media in this country and really the commentariat as to some of the utterances that oh, Julius Malema, the leader of the Economic Freedom Fighter, which is, by the way, South Africa's third largest political party, the silence from the corporate media, the silence from the commentariat, the very sort of people who themselves are tacit leftists or soft lefties, progressives and socialists in their own rights, it's very telling that they almost glo gloss over the almost, not almost, the actual genocidal comments made by the leader of the third largest political party in South Africa. It's amazing. It's amazing that they say nothing about that. In fact, we've seen the coverage from that particular uh, uh, interaction in court that it, it basically even at times uh, uh, create this false impression of Judas being fantastic on the stand. You know, I saw one uh, media outlet, I think it's News 24 or EWN, I'm not sure, a compilation of Malema's finest moments, his best moments. And in all of those best moments, of course, they said nothing about his comments that he's willing. Uh, if the time came in future, he may. Uh, and at times was saying he may not, but he basically said he wouldn't, he didn't rule out that he wouldn't, uh, would, uh, he didn't rule out, pardon me, that he wouldn't be amongst those people who call for the slaughtering of white South Africans. Those are the words of the person who leads the third largest political party in this country. Now, bear in mind, he said those yesterday in a court of law testifying under oath, but it's not the first time. It's not the first time he has uttered those words. Let me play you an interview he did uh, a few years ago. I think it was in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but before I play that clip, a reminder, as I always do, vlogs are quite short. So please hit that like button and share this once we are done. I'm hoping the sound is pashash. But with that being said, let me play that clip of this this not being the first time that Julius Malema has effectively said that he'd be willing to call for the slaughter of white people. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I'm saying to you, we have not called for the killing of white people, at least for now. I can't yes. guarantee the future. Yeah, but I mean, You'd understand somebody watching that, especially as it gets shared on Twitter, they freak out. Ah, it sounds like a genocidal ah, call. Ah, cry babies. Cry babies. I'm not calling for the, the slaughter the, of white people, at least for now. The, I, we, I can't give you a guarantee of the future, especially when things are going the way they are. Subtext. Especially think, if things are going the way they are, there will be a revolution in this country, I can tell you now. There will be an alert revolution, an alert revolution is the highest form of anarchy. That video, of course, by TRT World, fair use, fair use. I must say that uh, so that they don't take this video down. You know, you've got to understand that you're facing 
a group of people in this country, and there's two things I want to prosecute very quickly in this vlog, because you'll also see it play out in the comment section, uh, whether you're watching this on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. There will be the usual Malema supporters. These are hate-filled individuals, hate-filled lefties, whether they're socialists, statist, or communist, like the very party itself, the EFF. These are hate-filled individuals who will argue that making a comment like that is, oh, it's normal. It's, what, it's how we black people think. It's effectively what we black people want. They will argue that they are the voice of black people in order to justify the hate, the hatred, and the evil of the message of their leader, their messiah, a one Julius Malema. That is the argument that they construct. That is the attempt to try and whitewash, excuse the pun, the comments, the evil nature of the comments made by Julius. We've gotten to that point in this country where that's how people think and justify the actions of someone who literally is sprouting evil. And they do so falsely in the name of representing black South Africans. So that when a black South African like me disagrees and rightly points out that those comments are abhorrent, they're evil, they are literally the stuff that deserves to be uh, 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 pushed into the depths of hell, they don't know how to deal with that. They don't know how to deal with that cognitive dissonance that actually they don't represent black people. They, they, black leftists in this country are not the voice of black South Africans. That if anything, there are more of us as there physically is. Because you need to remember the EFF is not, the, the, the EFF, the, uh, if they are of every 10 votes, the EFF received one. That means there are nine out of 10 votes that do not want to associate with the economic freedom fighters or Julius Malema or Mwise Nihilzi and their antics and behavior and their words. They are not the majority. They do not speak for the masses as you often hear them say. Black South Africans do not walk around harboring hate and evil in their hearts. So that you should be very careful that you're not dribbled simply because they are a loud constituency on social media. Don't fool yourself into thinking they represent Black South Africa. In fact, I'll go as far as to saying Black South Africans are individuals. We all form our own views, our own opinions. But the moment you put a red beret on someone, whether they're Black, they're White, they're Indian or colored, they become the fools of our society, absolute fools of our society. So that if there's one thing I'm glad about, if there's one thing I'm, I'm quite happy to see, is that they're easily identifiable. The fact that they wear those red t-shirts, the fact that they put on those red parades, at least the rest of us in society can look, laugh, and identify the idiots of South African society. So that be very careful that you're not dribbled into thinking they represent the views of most South Africans. They don't. Because as Umalema said those comments in court, there was a collective gasp, a very silent but collective gasp in court, where people were just surprised at his goal of repeating those evil words in a court of law, under oath, exposing himself for the violent, evil idiot that he is. Which was funny and quite ironic. The, the, what was funny rather and what was quite ironic is that he thought he was on top of that attorney or, or that advocate, advocate uh, Mark Oppenheimer, who's representing the, the AFRI Forum. Oh, he thought with his usual bluster, his arrogance, he thought he was on top of the world. He was dominating that advocate. Meanwhile, the idiot didn't see that he was exposing himself for the world to see as the evil and hateful individual that he is. The world got to see that. But don't take it from me. Let's watch that exchange. I've done my research on this one, people. <laughs> oh, just as I said that, maybe I didn't. <laughs> Hang on, let me see if I can add the clip very quickly. Because that exchange was very telling, as it's busy loading now. That exchange was very telling. And when Malema and the EFF and his fanboys on social media, well, Malema was running rings around that, uh, that advocate. In fact, Malema himself saying, oh, you are the worst advocate. He's, he's, he's had court jabs 
with Afri Forum before, he says, and this is the worst advocate they've ever put forward. He's a weak attorney, a weak advocate, he said. But that so-called weak advocate brought us this malema that we can now see. And them in squalor, in poverty, in the townships. And for as long as there's no clear program to change the patterns of property ownership, we can all be guaranteed we are all going to be in serious trouble. Now, the way the sentence is structured, you say, we are not calling for the slaughter of white people, at least for now. That means at some future date, we may call for the slaughter of white people. Is that well, correct? Let's deal with that at that future date. I don't know what's going to happen. So you're saying you are not ruling out that in the future, you may very well call for the slaughter of white people. It may not be me. Could it be you? It could be me, yes, but it may not be me. Yes, yeah, so it could be you. You could, at some future date, call for the slaughter of white people. What will necessitate that? You tell me. I don't know. Why would, you, why would I do that? You've said you could do it in the future. Is that correct? I can't guarantee that I can't do it or I won't do it. So right now, so I'm not ruling out pledge, that possibility. If I asked you to pledge to say, I will never call for the slaughter of white people, would you make that pledge? I will do it with ease. Make that pledge. Why would I do that? I'm asking you to make that pledge. I don't, you I said I will do it with I, ease. I won't do it. Make the pledge. I won't do it. You won't do it? Yes. Ah, I understand. And that right there is why Julius Malema is evil personified. In a country of such high violence levels, in a country of the wanton disregard for, for human life, whether that life is white, black, Indian, or colored is irrelevant, but in a country where we see in excess of 50 plus murders, in a country where we see uh, some of the most gruesome murders happening within our rural parts of the country, especially the farming community, that person continues to sing a song such as Dubula Ibono or Shoot the Farmer. That person happily and openly says, oh, he, he wouldn't um, preclude himself from calling for the slaughter of white people in the future. That person repeats that evil utterance in a court of law. And we're expected as society to normalize this to see nothing wrong with this, to argue that this is just, you know, uh, it's good old Malema, ha, 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 ha. Be warned, be warned. When people show you who they are, believe them, believe them. So with that being said, let me wrap it up and say this. If you look at history, if you look at the 20th century in particular, and you situate a character like Julius Malema in that, he wouldn't really stand out. All communist leaders of history's past have always been violent, genocidal figures because they don't value human life. They don't value, even if they pretend, as is the case in South Africa with the Julias. Even as they pretend, no, 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 they, they, they stand for black people and black lives and blah, blah, blah. That's all, that's all nonsense. History shows us that when a communist tells you he has no respect for a life, whether that life is in the bourgeoisie or that life is in some uh, uh, distinct grouping that they identify, always understand that once they've gone after that target and eliminated it, you and your life, even the ones that he claims he represents you for, are next. You are next. They see nothing wrong with, uh, or oh, pardon me, let me rephrase. They see human life as cheap and disposable. Cheap and disposable. That is why you can have the leader of the third largest political party in this country stand on stages at political rallies and sing about killing one grouping of South Africans based on their race. Using the fig leaf, of course, of their occupation, because what you're meant to understand by Boer is a direct translation of farmer, but really we know 
what he means by it. He means white South Africans in particular, the white Afrikaans speaking community who self-identify with that expression of being Boers. So when he sings, shoot the Boer, kill the farmer, please understand that that's where he might begin if he had the power, but he won't end there, including you, the person who today will defend him and shill for him. Your life is equally as cheap as mine or the next person's in his eyes. And that's who you're supporting. Mm. There's something fundamentally wrong with our politics when this is the kind of thing people would rather defend. And they would not want to defend fellow South Africans, black, white, Indian, or colored. I refuse to be a part of that. And I refuse to allow these people to define that as being of black people. It's not. It is simply not. Most black people look at these people and go, what is wrong with these people in the head? What happens to them when they put those red little hats, those red little berets on their heads? They become society's functional idiots. There is something fundamentally wrong with the toxic nature of our politics in this country, which would rather sing songs of killing and maiming others than to extol the virtues of building a free, prosperous, non-racial and property owning society. Why are we not singing songs about doing that? About building this nation and building its economy? Why are we not singing songs about that? Why are we not singing songs about upholding our faith, our flag, our families and our freedom as South Africans? Where are the songs on that? Now you understand why I say hashtag politicians are trash. And especially the gaggle of leftist politicians, whether they're statist, socialist, or communist, they're absolute trash. I'm gonna end that one here. I'm gonna end this vlog here because it's before my Sabbath and I wanna get into a better state of mind. But you can see why this is angering. You can see why this is upsetting. These are the people who call themselves political leadership. So then I'll leave you with this as a final comment. Imagine how quickly Julius Malema and these politicians would stop singing this song if ordinary South Africans like you and me started singing something of an equivalent, like shoot the politician, kill the, the party leader, can you imagine how quickly you would understand how evil the song to Wuli Bunu is if ordinary people started singing that? Suddenly you'd see the security detail of these politicians triple, quadruple, even be 10 times the size because they would suddenly understand that yes, what people sing, what people utter, what people chant, especially if they do it from a place of anger, can lead to bad behavior in society, can lead to criminal, murderous behavior. And they would understand that if they were in the firing line of that kind of evil. But that's my view. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Because I know what's gonna happen in the comments. His, his throng of supporters wanna come in and try and say, oh, you shouldn't say this because you're black and blah, 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 blah. This has nothing to do with skin color. Julius does not represent black people. If anything, I'll be specific. Julius represents black lefties, black communists, black members of his party. He does not speak for black South Africans. He is the evil individual and we must call him out, him and his cabal. Constantly call him out. And shout out to those organizations that do that, including putting their resources where their mouth is the likes of AfriForum, IRR, you name it. In this case, AfriForum leading the charge. Anyway, that's my two cents. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. I really, really will be looking out for the comment section. And uh, yeah, let's get that conversation going of how we, we, we reduce the evil in our society and speak up the good parts of who we are, that faith, flag, family, and freedom types of African. That's my two cents. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button, share this video. And of course, if you want to support the show, the details are in the descriptor of this video. And I, as I always say at the end of every video, never trust a commie.